Okay, for people joining this live stream, we are looking at database connectivity and more from language. We are, we hope, the very late stages of the version 12 cycle uh, working on what's going in there. Okay, let's start off with talking about the way, uh, let's see, where was the example, the examples that we were looking at last time? Where are the examples we were looking at last time? Uh, those your were demo. In, uh, in the demo, which is in your uh, Dropbox. What was it called? Demo is the folder. And it's uh, yes. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, so here, um, and all that's unnecessary now, right? So the issue here, what we were talking about before was the how to do the wrapping of database inspect and so on. So did you guys come up with a solution? Yes. So uh, I have already updated the relevant documentation pages. So I removed the database inspect. Mm -hmm. And since we already have, so I, I basically copied what we're already doing with entity store. So in entity store, you can decide to uh, construct an entity store that doesn't have all the, so I, um, it's the, um, there is a usage message, uh, which is the third I added. So if you want to just have an entity stores with three types, you can just give the list of those types and then a little bit spec. And so, so basically now you can just say, well, first of all, you can just well, say- actually, don't we, we probably want to mirror this one here, this T-spec form. I, the T-spec- No, no, that's is, just the string. It's not the spec. Okay. So I, I added, if you scroll below there, I added a bunch of tentative details below because the to document uh, the the database backed spec of, spec of this. Okay. So, so if you look at the one that's right under your mouse now, that's the thing I copied for relational database object. So if you want to just inspect a few tables, then you can say just uh, table one, table two, table three. Okay, but so, so let me just understand. So we've got database connection, and then the idea is we have a single wrapper, relational database object that wraps around the database connection, right? Yeah. And has certain properties. Is that correct? Uh, it doesn't wrap. So a relational database object, when you wrap it around the database connection, connects to the connection and um, fills in the first argument of relational database object with all the schema information. So it's its own constructor. It's not just a wrapper. Okay. Now, the analogy here... Uh, okay. So then I just want to understand, if we look at the analogy with other database setups here, um, do we want to call it relational database object or just relational database or relation yeah i mean i think it's good to call it an object because it suggests that you can uh, uh, that it has properties that you can query that you can use it to connect and disconnect so it, it does things yeah but if we just called it relational database it i think you would have the same expectation my question is this at the time when we also can do writing as well as reading how will this look? Uh, largely the same. But so what's the I, operation that actually causes the transaction to happen? There'll be some kind of database. Um, that we need something like, uh, so there are two uh, possibilities. So right now, if we're going to expose it through the entity framework, the entity framework has L value mutation. And the problem is that- I'm sorry, that's what? L value mutation. Yeah, okay. So you can say, yeah. yeah. And the problem is with that is that if you do it uh, very procedurally like that, then you end up doing for each for each L value mutation, you end with yeah. a transaction, which is really, really bad. So we either need something like a block construct that which will wrap around all these operations or a commit command, which will yeah, say, okay, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think... Uh, Mm, transactions are also, in many cases, lexical, so that uh, once we use entity functions, uh, if we are going to use updates through entity functions, 
then uh, that can also be a lexical construct that wraps things in transactions. It's not always have to, has to be a dynamic thing like a block. I would even think it's more lexical anyway because we are going to compile it to SQL in any case. But so I have to say that I am really leaning towards calling this relational database, not relational database object. Because I think by the time you have a thing that does commits, you're going to want relational database commit and things like this. Yeah, but the question is what we expose that through, through which interface. Right now we're exposing this through entities and they don't have this kind of notion. You have a single resolver called entity value and then you have mutations. So, uh, so if we are not going to extend entities with some new constructs, then uh, what we can do is to use entity value resolver also to do commits and things like that. What, what do you mean? I don't understand how you'd use that resolver to do that because that resolver is just returning values. You yes, but it's value. also it's also executing the query, and when you are, uh, if you no, want, that's a total to... hack. That's a total hack. We're not going to use entity value that's that uh, ostensibly gets out values in order to do a database write. When you do database oh, yeah. write, you do return you need to have, Wait, you, 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 for en entity values for reading, you need something. I, to can, can I finish? When you when you when you write to a database, you typically get back results, which are at the very least uh, the uh, number of affected rows. And it's way uh, too much of a hack to use entity value to do writes. Well, Stephen, on the other hand, if we use it, uh, if we use entity value, uh, I mean, right now we are using implicitly entity value on the L L value. For, for from the the entity store. So when you write when you write entity open square bracket property equals something. Oh yes, that's, that's fine. That's the, I, I that's don't have just any problem a shorthand for entity value. That's just so on the well, left hand side. L value, I don't have a problem with it being an L value. My problem yeah. is Leonid's idea that it's a symbolic writing command that then is actually resolved and executed because it so happens to be wrapped in entity value. The, well, Not the, the big, actually, see, the big problem with that when we're going to do writes, what we really have to nail is the, the 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 select to update. So in that case, you cannot have the usual evaluation. If we use a value, the usual evaluation semantic that first you evaluate the right hand side and oh, then yeah. the left hand no, side. No, no, no. So that's wrong. And uh, no, okay, I understand. I, I suspect what we're going to end up with is a symbolic specification of the transaction and then a thing that says, do it. And actually, yeah, I, 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 I would much prefer to have something like that. Right. I mean, it's going to be does, like database execute yeah. or something. Yeah, no, but I mean, uh, the, the question is, if the query language is all written in entities, then we would have something that is like... Uh, that takes, uh, yeah. But but also, we, we, what we don't have yeah. is... You know, right now there's an L value concept of blah, blah, blah equals blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, we need to cross this bridge later. It's not the issue for right now. Absolutely. But my my point for right now is I think we should call this thing relational database, not relational database object. Because this is the representation of the relational data. I mean, so what is its real function? So we've got a database connection. It's pretty weird, frankly. We've got a database connection. And so, okay, so database connection is just like file in URL. It's a completely lazy concept. Yeah, I understand. It doesn't do anything. It's I just a wrapper. I just understand not so that. I understand that. But this doesn't seem possible. like it does anything things. either. So, what does this do? No, no, absolutely not. When you when you call relational database object, or if you want to try it in the notebook, SQL database object around the database connection, it will connect. And it will extract all the metadata. We need a place to store all that metadata, which is the schema. Yeah, I, I because understand. it's not something that you want to do at every connection time. It's it can be something that takes up to fifteen minutes if the database is large and far away. So, okay, I'm going to make several suggestions here. Okay, I think we should consider renaming database connection. Okay, I think we should consider calling it. Uh, because it isn't really a connection. It's not an active connection. Maybe we call it database reference or something. 
or database location or well, some such still, other thing? It's not, it's not quite, what you just said is not quite true because uh, uh, internally, it actually points to an active connection. Okay, so the claim that it's lazy is not correct. So if no, I give an authentication lazy. thing, well, wait, wait a minute. If I give authentication, at what point does it tell me, if, if, the, if the database needs authentication, at what point does it pop the password dialog? Uh, you give a password immediately to this to create this object. Okay, well, wait, 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 wait. Is database connection lazy or not? If it is lazy, then it's not going to pop a password until you do until you ask to create the relational database. No, but it's never going to pop a password because we don't have a password dialog because we cannot mutate it. So you just have to put the password in it. But if well, to let me rephrase your question, if you put the wrong password in the database connection, when is it going to complain that the password is wrong? Okay, that's and it's not when you evaluate database connection. It's when you actually call the, for example, when you actually make a query. So either well, when wait, you no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, it'll do it when you ask for relational database, when you create the relational database. Yeah, for, first that. But imagine that you create the entity store and then the password gets changed by the administrator. You can use the relational database object, but then when you try to do okay, a, fine. A call that, that's a separate issue, but okay. So I'm going to argue that the correct thing, that this is wrong, that we're confusing ourselves by calling this database connection. It is not a connection. It is simply a reference to a database. And that then this here, I'm not sure that's the right name either, but this here, I mean, I think it would be more sensible if it said something like relational database of database reference or database location or something. And that then returns a relational database that contains the schema metadata. And then to use this, you say entity store of that. That would be my proposal. I'm not completely set on these names, but that's what I think we should, something like this is what I think we should do. I just don't think this is a connection. It's not an active connection, and it confuses things to make the claim that it is. Because, for example, if you have a service connect, let, let's say I do service connect, right? Don't I get, I, then I get a service object out of that. Maybe we can call this wrapper then database settings. Which wrapper? Instead of database reference. It's not settings. It's, what is it? It's a, well, it's a pointer are, to a database. Some. No, it's not. It tells you, look, it's a symbolic thing, just like file. What What is the thing? Now, you're just going to tell me it's called database, but I don't want to use up that name for this. Uh, sorry, what is the question again? Okay, what is this thing? Okay, so so this thing is merely a wrapper that contains, I mean, is it perhaps something more like database object? Well, it it can contain okay not only the the, the the connection about the host, the password, the port, and so on, but in general, it could contain also database specific settings. Like you can start a connection with some extra settings. Right. So again, I'm sorry. Tell me again, what is it in this outer wrapper in this relational database thing that isn't in the inner wrapper? It's that the inner wrapper is merely a symbolic representation of where the database is, correct? But it has right. not yet connected to it. Is that right? Yeah, actually, I think that database reference is probably a sensible name. Uh, I mean, it, it is like just a file reference or a URL. It's the location of the database. It's the password. It's, it's not nothing more than that. Right. So in principle, you could call the relational database directly on a file name without using this database reference thing. You can, you can. File, we it's just a file, it's you can. Yes. Okay. Um, I just don't particularly like reference because it's not really, we, we, we also need a place, because it's not, it's not really just a reference. There are also some connections flag uh, that we will want to document, especially like when we will do like transaction and stuff. So there are a lot of flags that you can set per connection, and uh, I think this is the place where those flags should live. Um, 
Well, okay. So, what would the, what would you call it? I mean, it's, it's yeah. I was saying database settings. Because no, because it's not just the settings; it's the database. This this symbolic object represents a reference to this database. It does not it's represent merely the settings of the database. It represents a reference to the database. I think, uh, Ricardo, I think that this stuff that you're saying, like specific settings, if you think about it, username and password are settings, but they are part of, can be part of a URL as well. And so, and, and a URL is a reference. So I think it's fine. Do you think it's the right name or do you think it should be location or something? Or? No, I think, I think reference is fine. It's more than just a location. And, and in many cases, you can avoid using it. It's just convenient because it's hard. Like, if you don't use it, then you have to use URL magic strings, which are just, just a hack. And in this case, you can put a nice association inside with host goes to, port goes to, blah, blah, blah. All right. So let's try and write the documentation for this and see if it works. Okay. Database reference. A yeah, but can you can you start by copying the what already exists for database connection? Because it just no, no, I will obviously. I'm I'm writing okay. the guide page first, okay? Then I will copy over that, okay? Um, and and by the way, I think that the end of what you're doing here with entity store looks pretty good to me, okay? I I haven't looked at the details of these last few usage cases, but I mean, Tony, can can Tony please comment on this? Yes, the only question I had was if uh, we would maybe have in the single argument case you know, where we use the relational database object directly mm -hmm. if the first argument should be something like all or if we just keep it I think as a courtesy optional. we can just have it like this but yes. I agree that that should be the default should be all there yeah um, okay on our live stream, Ethan is suggesting the name database metadata, but I don't think that's quite right. It's not just the metadata. It's the, it represents, here, let, let, let's try and write what it says. Um, representation of, a reference to an external SQL database with authentication, et cetera. Um, Maybe you can write host uh, password and uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the next thing here would be um, okay. The next thing would just be. Uh, Relational database, okay? So this is symbolic representation of a relational database oh. Actually, we don't even need to say, it's just an external database. Um, symbolic representation of a relational database with schema. Is that right? Of relation of relational database and its schema. Yeah, I think that's about right. But like in the <coughs> language, normally we add the word object when it's something that is constructed by another function, right? So like URL asynchronous, something is relating an asynchronous object and the object. I know, but this is a self-constructor. Yeah, if we are changing that, it might be fine. I was just rethinking about this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing is registering database content. Okay. Um, symbolic representation of an entity store uh, representing database tables or something. How can we say that? Symbolic representation of database tables through an entity store. Maybe entity store types, because if you represent tables, they are represented with types. 
Yeah, I understand. But I mean, so what should we say for the whole thing, though? The whole thing, when we say entity store, where would you use entity store? Then just say database through the entity store. Okay. But the problem with this is that, that if we only select few tables, we can still construct an entity store and that will represent a part of a database. Yeah, but that's, this is the guide page, it's fine. Yeah, symbolic representation of database tables through an entity store. About that. Symbolic representation of database. This sounds a bit ambiguous. I mean, I think a database is fine because if you really want to be pedantic, you can even not register tables, but just register uh, basically a, a constructed uh, query. So you can you can just register an entity class, an implicit entity class where you're filtering. Okay, so. all right. Entity register, okay? Register entities corresponding to a table, is that right? No, you, you register store at the time. What so does entity register do? It takes an entity store and registers all the entities, all, all the tables, sorry, all the types that are in that entity store. Okay. So at this point, register we should talk about tables anymore. Okay. Register entities from an entity uh, so they can be referenced... I wouldn't say register entities. What would you say? I would entity say types. register entity types, yes. Okay, yes, that makes sense. So they can be referenced directly. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so that we've got those two utility pieces. Okay. Okay. All right, so now these are our functions. Is this all our functions or do we have more? These are all for now. Okay. Okay, so entity class. Representation of a table or virtual table. Is that right? Yeah. that right, a single entity in the database? Yeah. It could be like a well, row. In the database, you have rows. So if you want to use database language, you should say a single row. Single yeah. entity corresponding to a row in a database. Yeah, I think that's yeah. better because rather than because the row is the data and the entity is a lazy reference to the data. Yeah, that's correct. It also contains certain things that rows do not, such as in the verse keys. So are you happy with this description? Yeah. Yeah. Technically a row in a table. Yeah, so in a database table. Very good. Okay. All right. Do we do we want to have an overall description here? Let's see. Um, um, I don't know how we can describe that. Okay. Let's keep going. Just I wonder where the I wonder whether entity class should be moved with the other filtered entity class, sorted entity class, etc. Because since it can be used implicitly, you know. With the with the rule as a second argument. Well, then, then we have nothing up at the top. I mean, some of also, have. Yeah. and also in some sense, the ones that are below they represent transforms, while this thing represents the sort of a ingredient, like the constituent from which you build. Well, okay, let let's put it this way then: Antigas should be in both places. One is okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's cross that bridge. In a because it, yeah. Okay. Extract a value from an entity or entity class. Is that right, or is that 
not general enough. Um, extract a value from. Well, since we are now discussing this, since we are now discussing this in a database context, it should be useful to also mention that this actually executes a query on the database. Fine. Um, uh, perform data perform database queries to extract a value. To extract values, I think that in in general you you want to okay. use it to extract right. more than one. A form a database query. Well, extract values by performing a database query. Okay, get a list of entities from 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 a database query. Okay, what are these here? Oh, by the way, is this every function except for this merged one, which we don't like the name of? Yeah. Okay. All right. Entity property. Um, symbolic representation. What is it? What is the database term for this column? Okay, symbolic representation of an entity property. Well, strictly speaking, column correspond name. Corresponding to a column name. Um, symbolic representation symbolic what's the right way to say that um of an entity property but there is a problem with this because we may in the future end up with entity properties which will correspond to more than one column in a database okay uh and so this really corresponds to a field or a um well and property of entity that's well property. that's what it says right i mean it's a, it's a yes symbolic representation properties of an entity uh, well, we, we can cross by a database, something like that. Say again? Backed by the database. What is this thing? What is the right description for this thing? Symbolic representation of a name. Yeah, by the, the way, Carl on our live stream is pointing out that this description is lousy. Uh, get a list of entities from a database query. Um, You know, extract values by implicitly performing. Should we say by implicitly performing a database query? To make it clear, you don't have to do it. I, don't I think, think it makes it. Yeah. I think it makes it pretty clear that entity value is the subject here. So you don't do it, it does it. Okay. Actually, the uh, word implicitly so, would be confusing. Okay. All right. Okay. Get a list of values. Get a list of entities by performing a database query. Okay. So, all right. Entity property, again. What should that be? Well, maybe what we can say is that... Mm, uh, so what what Larry was saying is that maybe we should uh, use uh, say that the column might be virtual instead of calling it field. Okay, fine, but but just tell me what this is. This is a um, entity property corresponding to. What are you sending me? Are you sending me something? Uh, no, I think it was Andrea. It was for Andrea. I just replied okay. to everyone. My mistake. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, 
Okay, so this is symbolic representation of a property of a property um, uh, or something like effectively column name. Well, the other thing we could do is instead of using column, you could use attribute, which is the okay, relational that's, algebra version. <laughs> that's so obscure. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't solve the problem that there might How be about not saying one to that. Roughly column name or typically column name. Typically is better. Yeah. Okay, that will be less obscure for people. Um, okay, entity function. So this is pure function, well, function of, pure function of entities, of entities with a body that can be executed in the database, basically. I, I would say, instead of saying pure function of entities, because there is one exception to that rule, which is oh. not always entity. Can we say something that is like a, a functional representation of an expression on the database? Yeah, that's much better. Or it can be a function like constant binds to entities. No, you, then you just blew it. Uh, then you just went into Carlo's objection. Okay, wait a minute. Pure function. Uh, what were you saying? So in, in, in SQL, they distinguish between uh, queries and expressions. And expressions are when you're performing a sum or max, total, stuff like that. Okay, pure function so, representation of a database expression. Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, that might not be always correct in the future, although it probably is correct well, now. Then we can change it in the future. OK. Yeah, it's true that it can represent subquery as well. Yes. So expression or, an, or subquery. Or, or an entity. What? In principle, it could represent an entity if the result <laughs> value is an entity. Yeah, but that's okay. That's still an expression. We're just Let's keep going here. Let's keep going here. Okay. So filtered entity class. I think it would be important to say subquery, not query. Okay, so first of all, is this ordering reasonable? Well, okay, so entity class. Okay, so these are, what, what is the heading for these things? Uh, these are transformations on entity classes, basically. Except maybe for the extended entity class. Well, how about oh, operations still... on entity classes? Yeah. Tony, Tony's point is that. Uh, How about symbolic that, operations on entity classes, suggesting they don't happen immediately? Uh, yeah. The problem, the reason why transformations were better is that they tell you explicitly that the result value is also an entity class. Well, operations can result in anything. Um, okay. And since this is like the database page, can't we just tell that those are a way to write a query? Yeah, but you have to tell at least briefly what they return, if you can. And they all return other entity classes. Yeah, I would say that this is a constructed map to a query, to an SQL query. Well, are you, I would prefer operations here because I think the fact that it says symbolic suggests that, you know, first of all, it suggests it's not going to happen immediately. Let's try and write the documentation here, okay? Entity class filtered by a criterion. By Is it always an entity function? No, it can be a property if it's Boolean. 
Okay. So it's what about symbolic query on entity classes? No, it's incomprehensible because query you have to know, you know, what a database is. Yeah, yeah. on this page. <laughs> yes, but but people will be able to use this page without knowing SQL. I hope. Sure, but that still is an operation of querying the database. But you see, when you say uh, query, most people are going to think the query happens immediately. But right. I, I, I think, so Stephen, what's the algebraic term? Uh, homomorphism? And you're go, going from a space to the same space. Yeah, sure. So I think that this is something that transformation conveys better. That, you know, it's something that goes from the space of entity classes to the space of entity classes. Okay, representations of... How about that? Yep. Okay. Entity class filtered by a criterion. Uh, entity class sorted by a what? By a function. But it's either a property or a function. More commonly a property, I would say, or more. It can also be sorted by several properties at the same time. Then, then it's a function. Um, no, it's not a function, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Properties. Uh, by properties or a function. Should we say by properties or a function? It, it can also be multiple functions or a mix thereof. I mean, okay. it's, I mean by but this is the guy. Or function. You want to know more? <laughs> you can still, yeah. Okay, sampled entity class. How do we describe that? Mm, what is the sample? Set. What what is the sample? Is it random or the, is the problem is no, it's it's not random, but it's unless you sort it just before, there is no guarantee that it comes out in any particular order. That's okay. the problem. If we can't guarantee that it's random, we can't guarantee that. Okay, sample of entities from an entity class. Is that mm -hmm. right? Except uh, this may sound as if this would be a list of entities. Well, it is also an entity class. No, but these are transformations on entity classes. It says there in the heading. Entity class it's this for, formed from, well, okay. Entity class um, formed, by, formed by sampling by sampling a number of entities. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, extended entity class. So this is basically the same entity class with one or more properties added. This is why Tony says that it's not a transformation on the entity class itself, really. If I consider that to be sort of a separate thing, as you said. Maybe let's put it at the bottom. I mean, it's not the only one that adds properties. Okay, well, what, what, what's this one? So, so aggregated entity. It, aggregated entity class uh, performs aggregations on, on the entities of the class, possibly grouping by. And first. does what? I would start forms a new entity class, uh, creates a new entity class formed from aggregations performed over the original one. Good, it has to fit in one line. Formed by aggregating entities yeah that kind of subsumes that you might want to group as well first i think it's fine formed by 
aggregation by aggregating entities. How do you aggregate them? Well, if you don't pr provide the third argument, you aggregate them all together in one big row. I see. Uh, if you if you group by, then you you might get multiple rows. Okay, fine. Okay. Merged entity class. Now we want to rename this. What are our possible names for this? Uh, joined across entity class. Which I hate. Um, and uh, then you also add combined. Uh, combined entity and property combined were the two other options. That, yeah, you have it there. Property combined is pretty descriptive, but it's a long name. Composed. I'm sorry, say it again. Composed. I don't think so. It's like, it's very composed. It's not all over the place. It's <laughs> beautifully turned out. Um, tell me again what this does. I, I'm, I'm horrified that you have to explain it so many times. It takes uh, two entity classes. Yes. And for each of them, it takes pairs of entities. And... And uh, if they match together, it forms from a, each pair of entity a new entity containing properties of those two entities. So it's basically right. a filtered out of outer product. Right. Yes, that's probably the easiest way to describe it. Okay, but one of the things that's interesting about it is that it is it takes two entity classes and only a small fraction potentially of the elements of those two entity classes make it into this join. Right? Not always, because you can have, for example, cross join that will be the full outer product. So it all depends on the condition that you supply. What for about joining. what about simply the name joined entity class? Well, what if we want to do an actual join in the Wolfram language sense? That is, uh... but but we can't do this in this context anyway. Because you mean if you have two entity classes that are have the same schema effectively, you could in principle join them together. How would you no, do? You, yeah, yeah, you can. It's it's in SQL. It's called union union all, as opposed to union, which removes the duplicates. That that is really what join does in the Wolfram language. Yeah. So I, so Carlo, you would prefer to 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 keep this name for when we sub start supporting uni and all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's not very difficult to support all these, uh, let's say, vertical things like union, intersection. Yeah, yeah, sure, it's it's not it's not hard. So union and all would become joined entity class and uh, union would become unioned entity class, I guess, or maybe delete duplicated. <laughs> Because it's it doesn't sort. Right. I mean, it's a little crazy to be using all of these functions. I mean, how many? How, how far do we go? You know, there are not well, so I, many of them still. On uh, there are just a few, and we already like. You can actually think there are actually very few of them. Look, there are only five, and you give they give you almost all the power of SQL. So uh, uh, the, the, there are the just. Main, I mean, yeah. we, if you remember, we talked about this at some point, whether we would should have something which is like a general operator that then takes a wolf from language function that it's the equivalent. The problem yeah. is that this gives too much of the idea, like in data set, that you can do absolutely everything. And then and then when you when we cover just two percent of the <laughs> operations that wolf from language can do, then people will be disappointed. Yeah, I understand. And also, I don't know to what extent you you are willing to look at other examples out there, but in most ORMs or other languages, such as even, for example, Link, which is L-I-N-Q, the language integrated query in the C-sharp platform, they uh, prefer always to use separate primitives for pretty similar set of primitives that we are introducing here. Uh, so, I mean, there are many precedents of doing this kind of design in different platforms and languages. Yeah, it's just I, I just hope people are going to be able to understand all this stuff. Um, 
let's see. By the way, Carl on the live stream is asking what the difference between merged entity class and extended entity class is. And the difference is that merged entity class can change the number of entities because it's performing effectively a Cartesian product between two entity classes. Uh, and extended is only adding properties piecemeal, so it cannot change the cardinality of the entity class. Okay, so, you know, one thing is this is, look, this is the first, this is the only one of these that is not unary, that operates on multiple entity classes, right? Yeah. Again, well, okay. Until we add more of those which we don't support yeah, yet. I understand. Okay, so the words that we have are joined. We don't want to use it because we because it's conflicting with join. Merge, we're worried it's conflicting with our merge operation. Combined, we think it isn't explicit enough. What about product? Product entity class? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. But it's not always a product. It's, um, it might be also confusing. Although in some sense it is. It is a filtered out of product, right? Yes, yes it is. Except that it's filtered in a very specific way. It's filtered by a property. Well, that's a short term. In the most general form, it's it's filtered by a, by a predicate. But you want to do the, the I personally, the, the... given that description, I say combined entity class makes more sense. Let, let's let's see what happens if we write that. Okay. Um, the, the, see, and I think that combined kind of has the same problem as joined. Like you're not conveying the fact that you're combined horizontally and not vertically. You know, there is not like an entity group or some sort. Well, let's see. But that is an odd concept to express it in, in, in the name, right? I mean, we no, hold on a second. So entity class formed by combining Classes with corresponding properties? No, not very good. How about augmented entity class? <laughs> okay, the, the question is what's augmented, what's extended? Yeah, yeah I think it's largely the same. I think we I have still... to... I think we have to give some word that reflects the fact that there's more than one entity class that's being, you know, that's being operated on here. Product does that. No, it only does that because you're thinking of it as a mathematical product. If you just see the word product, to most people, you know, it means something bizarrely and utterly different. Plus, our own product function is a product as in, you know, capital Pi type product. Mm. Which is not exactly multiply. Well, you know, well, times uh, is what we would call maybe outer entity class. <laughs> I'm looking at um uh I mean blended entity class, or is that too weird? To me, what comes out of a blender. <laughs> Yeah, it assumes somehow some randomness or some kind of um, linked linked entity class, mixed entity class. Mixed is better, but probably combined is probably still better. Carl is talking about dishwashers, and um, yeah, I agree. Um, all right, combined entity class. Uh, 
how about by combining entities with corresponding properties? I would say just just say com and the most general way of saying it is like entity class formed by combining the properties of two entity classes. And then don't say anything about the predicate or say something about the predicate. Can you combine this, more than two this, at once? No. No. This makes it a little confusing in terms of the fact that uh, you combine per entity, not per class. I don't know how how implicit is it. I mean, how how clear it is from this description that this is not uh, like that. That you basically have to do it entity by entity. How about something like this? Look, this is just a short description. Let, let's let's keep going and see whether we can write a. Um, uh, I think that's not totally terrible. He says. No, it's not. Okay. Let's then do the rename here. Okay, we've got a couple of renames to do. And unfortunately, I am going to run out of time again. But I think we've made progress here because I think we've got the final names here, which is really good. Um, we've still got work to do. And, and I want to look at the documentation for Entity Store, but let's do the renames that we have to do. Okay, so merged entity class becomes combined entity class. You know, um, who's, uh, sorry, is, is it Andrea who's here PMing? Yes. Could you could you report this thing that this has gotten just unbelievably slow typing in this, um, unless I don't use, unless I shouldn't, yeah. This starts with thing is super cool, but it's got but gotten incredibly slow at this point. Um, okay, I can report it. That, that's a thing for, for Brian, I think. And, and personally, I'd be perfectly happy just to type the name, right? And just say matches, and then this could be a pull down that could be used for pure cuteness value. Um, Oh, that's totally confused there. Okay. Um, all right. So the other things we want to change are database connection. Becomes database reference. And uh, what was the thing that we called this before? Uh, relational database, what's now relational database was database. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Re relational database object is, you've already excised uh, SQL database object. Okay. SWSH on a live stream asks about grouped as a name similar to data frame group by method for for our combined thing. No, I think for aggregated. But uh, uh, I uh, the the thing is that we before that we had grouped and aggregated, and they were different things. One with three arguments, one with two. Uh, since grouping is optional, then probably should not be called grouped. Is that an official name, SQLite database? Absolutely. But I mean, is that is that a multi-brand name or is that just the name of a particular brand? It's a very particular brand. It's just a file-based database, very specific. 
uh, produced by a single company. Is it a company? Uh, yes. So I think we should just say to a local file-based SQL database and not decide whether it's that particular kind. Oh, uh, I don't think this this is correct, Stephen. Why? Because because uh, it's very specifically always do doing this through the SQLite database. But, and, it, but that uh, must it's always depend on the dot SQLite. It depends on the file name. If if there was some other thing that got developed that was another local file based SQL database, then right. I mean, so far, SQLite is the only one that has files that we support. Oh, and also, oh, yeah. SQLite is the most widely used database in the world. Okay, fine. It's but there's nothing wrong with the Oracle than that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the statement, though. It represents a, a remote SQL database, right? Yeah, maybe we can just push the more specific details to details section. Yeah, yeah, something. that's fine. Okay. Okay. So, but now this can have options, right? It can have authentication options, correct? No, they're not options. It takes an association as the first argument, also. I mean, it, if you provide the, maybe I should add it, a third usage message for yes. the association. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, usually you, you type just URL and then, yeah. And then what? And then it unpacks it. It unpacks it into an association. But yeah, we can document the association. Okay, whatever it is, I don't know what your your association is there. Um, okay, you, you'll document that. Mm -hmm. But but you're saying that this. And by the way, that that formatting is all that looks horrible. Yeah, I know. I don't know how to make it look better. You have to ask. Why. I, I um, tried. <laughs> It probably has to use the formula font or whatever it's called. And uh, yeah, it's the literal font. Yeah. Shoot, I'm going to have to go in just a moment here. So, so let me just look at. Um, uh, we'll have to continue this. I'm sorry, uh, we did make good progress today. Um, um, yeah, hopefully we can fit this in um, within the next two days, but I think we made good progress. I think you're, you're good to go to finish the, the implementation here. I'm not totally. Uh, the implementation is long finished. Well, apart from bugs <laughs> and, and renaming functions. Yeah, I sure that takes uh, 20 seconds. Well, good. That's all good. I do not like the term back end. I mean, if this is the SQL dialect, then say that the name of the database that that doesn't make sense i mean unfortunately the backend is more precise than the dialect um and also be engine oh so muhammad on our live stream asks of all their speed improvement using database integration of a database link absolutely no it is absolutely not the same technology it is sparkly uh, new technology but i'm sorry to say that in the first version there will be no speed improvement at all is that right uh, because yes that's absolutely right because we were focusing on query generation and in terms of the uh, in fact database link is pretty pretty fast apart from the case when you are executing a fairly small query multiple times so if you are executing anything that takes any real does any real work on the database then database link is pretty fast because it's using MathLink, I mean, it's using JLink and so for MathLink uh, behind the scenes to transfer data. And it's using right. Java, so so we will improve on performance later, but for version one, we were not specifically focusing on performance. I, I mean, the other okay. thing that has we said is that for, for all series uh, workloads, the bottleneck is the database. So you're not gonna be waiting a long time for data to come back. You're, right. you're hey, with, hey with respect to database reference, um, Carl on our live stream is talking about indirectly referenced credentials. And the authentication, you know, I really think we need to support authentication properly because it has really pretty good technology 
for you know dealing with authentication dialogues and so on. So this username and password stuff, you should be able to feed that in. Again, let's not solve that right now, but URL has an authentication option, I think. You should be able to use that to put this stuff in there because that means that you can then use all the stuff for masking the um, the credentials in a, in a notebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Am I making sense? So you're not just doing the, the horrendous thing that people using databases so often do, which is to burn plain text passwords into scripts and so on. Am I making sense? Yeah, we'll, we'll look into that. I'm not sure we have the time to properly integrate stuff like authentication dialogue for version 12, really. No, no, you do because it because you don't have anything to do. It doesn't. It, it authentication dialogue just returns an association. See, all you have to do is it's okay. You will be able to do this. Just just yeah. learn from the URL people how the authentication option works. Okay, and it will even do better than that. It will integrate properly with keychains and everything, and people will not have to type their database passwords in plain text, which I just think is the most horrendous, ridiculous security issue that I've seen so way too many. Who's, who's the main person we have to interface with to figure out? Um, uh, Fahim would know about it, and Brad Ashby would know about it. OK. OK. All right. I really need to go, unfortunately. Is that Just for one second, let me look at this. Um, are you confident of this setup here? I mean, is this does this correspond? What on earth is all of this stuff? Wow. Did Tony sign off on all this stuff? So I see it the first time. So the answer is no. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You see the first time in the documentation. Yeah, yes, that that's what I mean. Okay. All right, to be continued, but I'm I'm going to assume that Tony will have gone through this, and I mean, I yeah, don't yes, quite... I I agree with the design of um, specifying tables and properties. Okay, the... but why why in this actual thing up here, isn't this the analog of our data up here? All of this stuff down here. Uh, no, yeah. not really. Uh, because uh, it's it's like a shorthand that then gets expanded to data. Um, yeah, I understand. I'm just talking about the structure of the documentation, whether we put all of that level of detail up in that usage section, or whether we just say down here, I don't think we should put that whole level of detail up there. I think we should... Uh, put, uh, I can shuffle it around. Yeah, I mean, I would put less detail there. I would just say type one arrow you know, source one or something here and leave that that line as the end of it and then put all the detail about what that source can be can down be. below. Okay. Um, okay, terrific. All right, we'll okay. need to wrap it up here and to be continued, thanks you guys and thanks to people on the live stream. I will push all this documentation back into the repository. Um, okay. See you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.